Today I'm going to show you something amazing, almost mysterious. We have what's called zero volt switching in a circuit with two MOSFETs and two fast diodes controlling them through the gates. And I put a ferrite ring transformer here with 2000 nanofarad capacitor and two light bulbs, 50 watt halogen. One on the AC coming out of the ferrite ring transformer, the other DC in line with the power supply. Now when we turn the power on, which one's going to glow first? You might think the one in the DC, but watch what happens. 5 volts, 8 volts, the AC out of the secondary starts glowing already, and this one's not glowing. 10 volts, now the AC out of the secondary is glowing quite brightly, and the DC is just beginning to glow. 12 volts, look at the thing out of the secondary, how bright it is, and the DC is just coming up. As we go down in power, you'll see the difference. Quite remarkable, isn't it? So how can we possibly explain this? Watch on it and you'll be amazed. I thought I would continue my study of which electronic circuits are most efficient for making electronic transformers say for little ferrite rings like in downlight transformers or for tall Tesla coils like the one over there and today we're going to study zero volt switching which is a well-known circuit here's the schematic I won't get into it because everybody knows this we have two MOSFETs here two fast diodes here capacitor here and a primary coil here here which is tapped in the middle and there's our primary coil 12 turns 6 plus 6 tapped in the middle from the main power supply the secondary has a light bulb halogen coming off of it 50 watts each end of the primary coil goes to a MOSFET and very importantly in parallel with the primary coil we put a 470 nanofarad capacitor which has remarkable results now let's turn on the power and see what happens as we go to about 16 volts, 1 amp, this light bulb over here is glowing very brightly off the secondary, but the other identical halogen bulb from the DC power supply isn't glowing at all. Let's turn it up until we can see something glow here. It's not even glowing at 20 volts, and look at it shining over here. And let's, let's try to understand why that happens. Why is this light shining so brightly? Here it goes, just coming up. But not that one. Let's go a tiny bit higher. Just barely glowing here. Look at it shining there. How can we possibly explain that in terms of the known laws of physics? Now we have placed a larger 1 microfarad polypropylene capacitor here. A thousand nanofarads, about twice as big as before. We're going to turn on the power. We're at 15 volts to shine before, and now we're shining quite nicely at 12 volts, 1.5 amps. The amps is higher, and the DC bulbs still not glowing at all. Let's keep turning it up until we see something in the DC. Just starting to glow here at 15 volts. And look at the other one. There's the DC, and there's the AC out of the secondary, and we're only at 16 volts, 2 amps. What's happening here? Next, I've wired two 1,000 nanofarad capacitors in parallel, so effectively we get 2,000. These are polypropylene rated at 250 volts, and they can flip back and forth quite easily. Let's turn the power on now. 5 volts, 10 volts. Now we're only at 9 volts, it's shining quite brightly. Before we had 15 or 12, and this bulb's coming up also. So it's keeping the same ratio, but we're going to much lower voltages by having the bigger capacitors because more currents being stored there for AC flipping. Look at this. 9 volts, 1.63 amps. The DC is barely glowing and look at the AC. Let's turn it up a little bit more. Now here we're at 12 volts, 2 amps. And look at the difference. Now they're both shining but the AC is much brighter because we have 2,000 nanofarads of capacitor here. Now what those do, what that does is, the DC power comes in here, flips back and forth with this red coil. When that happens, this capacitor charges, and it dumps all that energy here into the light bulb. 
sort of like a little tiny Tesla coil. Let's see how it works of all the capacitor values studied. ZVS ferrite ring transformer. That's this thing. It, let's do it at 5 volts, the values I measured at 12 turns on the primary, 24 turns on the secondary, red and white. A polypropylene capacitor in parallel with the primary. That's this thing in parallel with the primary. For low capacitance, we get low current, 72 kilohertz frequency, very weak lights. That holds true until we hit about 220 nanofarad, a little higher current. The kilohertz drops down to 13 because the capacitance value is larger and it gets medium. Then for all of these cases like 470, 1000, or 2 times 1000, the amps goes up to quite a lot. The frequency goes down, we get very strong lights. So this is sort of like a snowball rolling down a hill, much like a Tesla coil accumulating energy and releasing it. So that makes this zero volt transformer a very, very efficient way to make down lights or low voltage transformers of any kind. The most efficient one I've ever seen. Very, very simple. And I would recommend that people use this in companies for down lights rather than the transistors they're using now. Now we can also use the same zero volt switching circuit to control the resonance of this huge tall Tesla coil. Zero volt switching exactly the same as before. Here's the diagram. Two fast diodes and two MOSFETs and we tap a coil in the middle and have a capacitor here. The difference is for this big Tesla coil with 16 primary turns 1,000 secondary turns is that the capacitor we place in parallel between the two ends of the primary now has to be as small as possible rather than big. 0.47 nanofarad or less than 1 nanofarad to make it work. Let's turn on the power and see what happens. Now we go to 17 volts, 1 amp. Now you can see we get a nice wireless light off both ends of the secondary coil like that. And also we can see the top of the coil glowing quite nicely with wireless power. So the reason this works is because a big capacitor will disturb the resonance of this coil and won't oscillate by Lenz's law with the primary. For no capacitor there, you get about 0.7 amps, very high frequency, but no light whatsoever. For small capacitors like 0.47 or 0.68 nanofarad, get about 0.8 amps, and they hit the resonance frequency 860 or 870 kilohertz, you get a strong light. For bigger capacitors like these, up to 10, the amps doesn't go down too much, but the frequency goes way down to about 670, and now the light becomes very weak, because at 670 kilohertz, this primary coil here, around the outside, will not resonate with a secondary coil. We need about 860 or 870. So that's why we have a very small capacitor here, as small as possible. So the general principles of making a ZVS work for a Tesla coil versus a ferrite ring transformer are completely different. Instead of having a lot of current charging it up in the capacitor, we want the capacitor as small as possible so that we match the resonance between the two coils. It's a very important lesson in physics, and I hope you enjoyed the day.